So if you like to sell clothing, if you like to resell clothing, then this is the video for you. If you don't like anything about clothing, well, this isn't the video for you. I'm Vicki with Avante Avenue. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thanks for joining me and be sure to subscribe. You know, last video that I put out, I shared some of the clothes that I bought at a local consignment shop for $1 each. And it got me to thinking the other day when I was listing clothes, you know, getting them lined up and ready to list. And I got to thinking that maybe some of the things that I do to prep my clothes and get them ready to photograph and list them and even pack and ship them might be helpful to you. So if you like to sell clothing, if you like to resell clothing, then this is the video for you. If you don't like anything about clothing, well, this isn't the video for you. But with that said, I hope you enjoy this and some of the tips that I share. And at the end of this video, I'm going to share some of my solds on clothing. I haven't done that for quite a while, so I'm probably going to go back the 90 days and share some of the things that I've sold on eBay, Macari, and sometimes Poshmark. So with that said, Let's get started. A few of the things that I have on hand that makes sorting and processing clothing easier is a clothing rack that I picked up at the local Walmart. I think it was, I don't know, less than $20. And then I also picked up a bunch of hangers. And I like to use white hangers for my photography because the background is white. So those are a few things that I invested in. Not a whole lot of money. And I recycle the white hangers because I take the old hangers, the metal ones, the plastic ones, whatever, to actually hang the items in the closet, if that's what I'm doing, and save the white ones to uh, use again. I'm going to show you here what I do to prep for photography. I choose a bunch of clothes from another room, typically, and I line them up. I like to work with either all pullover tops or all blouses you know no, normally I work with all women's clothing first but in this batch I have some women's clothing lined up and then a few men's shirts as well that actually helps to speed up the process when I'm listing to have like things together and as I said I have my camera ready hangers they work really well for this because the label the tag still shows uh, for the photography but I also take another close-up of the tag and basically the very first thing I do after I change the clothing over to one of my white hangers is I button up everything and I inspect everything. I check everything I can. Actually the clothing that I work with gets checked about four times. I'll explain that along the way in the video. So I just keep repeating this process of changing the hanger over, inspecting the shirt, inspecting the top, looking for any flaws or issues. Here's a consignment shop tag. You know I love those when I pay one dollar for something that's been sitting there for 90 days hasn't sold and I love it even more when it sells and this prep time is the time to remove any unwanted tags you don't want to leave that little thrift store red or green or yellow tag on that clothing and I most certainly don't want to leave my consignment shop tags on there so this is the time to remove any tags and I have some dollar kitchen shears from the Dollar Tree that I use just for removing tags as this process can ruin good scissors. You know, I try to check for buttons when I buy a piece of clothing. I've said before, I sell a lot of button front shirts and I do try to check for those buttons. I'm getting better at it. I rarely miss it, but on occasion, yeah, I might miss a button, but it's so important to make sure that you do this at the time of purchase. I, when I'm in a store or if I'm at a sale, I try to button every other button as a quick way to check and make sure all the buttons are there. And of course you have to check the cuffs as well. Now if I find something that has a flaw, something that I can fix, um, I take a piece of paper, a little piece of paper, punch a hole in it, and write a little note and put it over the uh, hanger and set it aside. I don't have the patience for that at this time. Sometimes you can find buttons in hidden places on the shirt. Replacement buttons. Do you know where to look? This particular top had an extra button in the side seam. Always be sure to check the side seams for extra buttons as well as the bottom of the uh, button placket on men's shirts. You often can find an extra button there too. 
And if it's a roll tab sleeve, you know, one of those sleeves that you can roll up and it has a tab on it, a button tab sleeve, a roll tab sleeve, there's different ways to explain it. Well, I actually had a blast once, a woman's blast, that um, it was cut off. They didn't like it and they cut it off. And when I went to list the shirt and I started rolling up the sleeve, there was no tab. So if you're buying button tab sleeves, which by the way, a lot of people like, a lot of women like this, um, yeah, check for the tab, make sure it's still there. Don't forget to check the pockets. Not only if they're a button flap pocket, you want to make sure that the button's there. You also want to put your hand in the pocket and see if there's any money. No, I haven't found any money yet, but I keep trying. So as you can see here, the clothes are ready. They're prepped and lined up for photography. It makes my job so much easier. And I do a double check to make sure all the hangers are the same. I do not like photographing on metal hangers or some of the white plastic hangers. I really think consistency in the photographs looks nice. So I do suggest you um, invest in some hangers. And as I said, I don't store them on those hangers. I store them on just regular hangers. See, I, I hang up all on my blouses and men's shirts. I only fold up the pullover tops and put them in bags. So I do have two closets dedicated for clothing. I know you may not have that. You may need to fold everything and that's fine. I just try to keep everything as wrinkle free as possible until I'm ready to uh, ship it. I do have a video out there for how I photograph my clothing and I'll put a link at the end of this video. I don't want to get into all of it right now. So I take a photograph of the item front, back, all the details, sleeve details, tag details. I take a lot of photos. I let the photos tell a story of what I'm selling. That along with the title. I try to provide all the information I can including a photograph of the care tag just in case somebody doesn't read the description. Hopefully from the title and the photos they have a pretty good idea other than the measurements of course which are in the description but hopefully they have a pretty good idea of what they're buying. And I have an over the door hanger pretty simple got it at Big Lots for less than ten dollars and that has it has um, like 12 hooks on it but I line up a row of six shirts and then sometimes I do a second row. I try to photograph 12 items at a time. That's about two days worth of clothing. What I mean by that is I only spend a half a day listing clothing. It's the first thing I do most every morning. I work from my drafts. I list six items and then I head downstairs where I am right now and work on hard goods. It really breaks up my day. It's a system I started um, a couple months ago and it's really working out great. It, I don't get bored that way. You know, I, I spend some time on clothing and then I spend some time on hard goods. I take a break in between and it's working out good. I'd like to share with you here how I measure a top. It's pretty simple. You know, I do the armpit, the armpit. I do the sleeve length, sleeveless here, and I do the back length. And pretty simple, but I'm gonna show you here what I do. I mentioned that I do four checks on the clothing. I inspected it when I was getting ready to photograph it. And not only do I inspect it when I'm putting it on the hanger, I also inspect it again in many ways when I have it in my photo area because that's where I often see loose threads and things. So I keep little scissors around and I trim off XX threads. You know, it's pretty messy how clothing is actually made. They really don't take the time to uh, make the clothes look nice. You know what I mean? When I'm getting ready to list and I'm looking it over again, checking all the details, and you know, I need to back up a minute. And I'm looking it over again, checking all the details. You know, I write the title when I'm doing the photography. Yes, that's right. I write the title when I do the photography. That is when I'm completely focused on the item in front of me. I'm looking at the collar style. I'm looking at the sleeves. I'm looking at the overall style, the length. If it has side slits at the bottom, if it has embroidery on it, if it has, uh, if it's button front, if it's pullover, that is when I'm actually in my mind starting to write the listing. I pay very close attention to the article of clothing when I'm photographing it. It makes it so much easier when I actually sit down and start to write the title and make the listing. To measure the top, I just lay it out on my table. I try to make sure that my white tablecloth is clean. You may not use a tablecloth at all, but I have a clear glass table. I get a lot of reflection off of it. So I put a white tablecloth on there on part of the table, not where my laptop is. It would get too hot. I have these humongous lint rollers that I pick up at Ollie's, these pet rollers. I'll show it to you here. 
and I just clean off the tablecloth and make sure there's nothing on it. And I actually like working on the white. I've also worked on black before, but having a solid color underneath the clothing lets me see if there's any lint or fuzz or anything that's, that's there so that it, I can clean it up before it gets on my clothing. So as I said, I lay it flat. I measure from the back side. I measure from the left armpit to the right armpit facing the back side. Take that measurement, step over to my laptop, and type it in immediately. I have a uh, template that I work from. Armpit to armpit equals, sleeve length equals, back length equals. In this particular case, I'm doing the back length next. Step over, put that in my laptop, and then do the sleeve length. Sometimes it's sleeveless. And I type that in instead of a measurement. And then I like to show you here how I fold clothing. I do it two different ways, really. If it's a pull over top, I will often fold it placing the clothing facing down and folding the back in and then I uh, fold it in half and fold it in half again so that the the tag in the back will show and be visible the tag in the size for when I put it away in my uh, clear bag sometimes the tag doesn't show because of the style of the neckline if the tag doesn't show then I'll insert a little piece of paper that I've written on it the brand and the size so it's easy to find it you know in my stack of clothing I always want to be able to see the brand and the size at a at a glance I use these clear bags and I absolutely love them I'm going to insert up here somewhere the uh, company that I use in the clear bags they are crisp they are clean absolutely clear they're peel and stick and they can be opened up and re reclosed I can press the air out slightly by leaving the corner up a little bit I think it makes a great presentation. I also think it's unexpected for them to get their clothing double bagged. You know, a lot of people just put the clothing in a poly mailer and by the time it gets shook around and gets to the buyer, it's kind of like this, you know, crunched. I'm assuming it stays nice. I've never mailed anything to myself, but that package is nice and crisp. It's, it's got a nice uh, weight to it, a nice thickness to the uh, plastic, and then it's inside the poly mailer. I think my buyers like it. I get really good feedback. As far as sorting the clothes before they go to my banker boxes that I've shown you before in my downstairs storage area, I, um, I picked up several laundry baskets. These are mesh, lightweight laundry baskets from Walmart. I got them for, I think, less than $5, just under $5. And I think I have about five of them around the house. But I started putting four of them in my office, and I have one for smalls and one for medium, one for large, extra large, whatever, you know, and it gets them sorted already one step to save me time to take them downstairs and, and put them in their final storage place until they sell. And I'm just going to show you a couple of things here on shipping. As I told you, I used two bags, the clear bag that I store the items in, and then I use a poly mailer to ship it. I also have a half sheet or a sample of a label that I use to add for the weight I don't typically have to check the weight when I'm listing something. I'm pretty good about knowing that it's under a pound. So I put the bag clothing on the scale along with my shipping label for weight check. I don't put the poly mailer on at this time unless it's really, really close. If it's close to one pound, then yes, I'll add the poly mailer. But in this case, I'm just showing you here a quick way to, uh, to weigh. But always allow for your packaging if you're not sure. This came in at only four pounds, eight ounces. I'm good to go. And by the way, I've been charging $5.49 to $5.95 for first class shipping. So that extra money that I collect helps pay for the eBay fees and currently PayPal fees. I also like to put thank you labels on things. I've talked about this before. I just use uh, some white address labels, some 30 up labels. I just go into, you can go into, I think a word program or a publisher program and just create a label, print them up 30 up and I have this as a little thank you note that I put on all my packages. This has worked out great and it saves me from writing a handwritten note. As I said, I no longer include a packing slip because I'm trying to keep any personal handwritten items because of COVID. I'm trying to keep that out of my package and be just to the point, but I'd like to send a thank you. I do not put the labels on typically for storage. I just want to show you this here for mailing. I keep an assortment of these clear bags on hand. You can see here I have nine by 11 and a half. 10 by 12 and 11 by 15 and a half. And the same thing goes with my actual poly mailers. I keep at least three sizes on hand for clothing. And then I have jumbo sizes of poly mailers and clear bags for coats and jackets and larger items. 
I save the bags that they come in and I just cut off the end and make a little note and tape it on there. It helps for finding the right bag really fast. When I'm sealing up a bag of clothing, I always allow one finger width when I'm folding over the flap. I, I actually literally put my finger in there and measure it. Why do I do that? Because when the buyer gets it and goes to cut it open, I want to make sure they have enough room to cut open the top without getting too close to the clothing. So I don't close it completely tight. That one finger width I think really helps. The other thing I do is if there's too much of a gap along the sides, I take a piece of packing tape and seal that leaving at least one inch at the top again for them to get their scissors through. I just use my brother laser printer to print my labels. I don't have one of those fancy label printers. I haven't felt a need for it at this point. So I just like to use sheets and my laser printer is really cheap. I get thousands and thousands of copies with a cartridge. I mean, I can't even tell you how many I get, but a lot. So I found these, um, I got these labels on eBay and I've tried different labels from different companies and I really, really like these labels mainly because I can tell exactly where the label is. It's easy to peel off and the back side also has printing on it so I can easily tell the front to the back. Sometimes that's hard to do with, with some brands of labels. I will share the information up here as to the company that on eBay that I bought these from. I would definitely go back and buy more of these. I'm very happy with these labels. and I am not sponsored by any company or product that I share with you. I try to take my photographs in the evening. Sometimes I take them after dinner or late afternoon if I have extra time, but I always try to stay ahead a little bit. And then I will sit down either on my phone, perhaps in the evening, and I'll do some drafts on eBay, or maybe at my computer I'll just import the photos and do some drafts after I've picked tap go and, and did my little uh, collages with them that I like to do but I try to have them ready for me for first thing in the morning. So as I said, I put in a good half a day working on clothing and then I like to take a break. So I'm just gonna go outside and take a break and show you this beautiful view that we so love um, in our backyard. And there is one house back there now. They're still, they haven't moved in yet. They're still working on it. So there's a couple new driveways back there, but only one house and we have a gorgeous view. And I'm gonna show you that. And we're just going to take a little break before I show you what sold. I'm not going to show all of my solds on eBay, Macari, or Poshmark, but I'll share some of them. So keep on watching. I accept an offer of $11.99 on these men's swim trunks. I pick up swim trunks all year long when they're in excellent condition. I accept an offer of $12 on this sleeveless denim top. I sell denim tops all year long. I sold this Pepsi hat for $15. I'm on the lookout for hats in excellent condition if I can get them for $2 or less. Another pair of swim trunks new with tag, $15 they sold and I got these at the Goodwill. Most of my items I get at church rummage sales or garage sales. I accepted $14.99 on this Chico's top. I try to only buy size 3 and up on Chico's. And if you need a size chart, just Google. Chico's size comparison chart to know that a size 3 is an XL. I accepted $15 on this t-shirt. I still like to pick up t-shirts for men when I can get them for 50 cents to a dollar any place I can find them. But I am particular on the graphics. I sold this New Directions top for $14.99. I do very well with the brand New Directions in pretty much every size. I accepted $15.75 on this new with tag Sag Harbor Woman Blouse. It's a plus size. Plus size always sells. I sold this for the full asking price of $17.99. CD Daniels, not a real popular brand, but it's a 1X plus size. I sold this for full asking price, $17.99 for this Rockin' Republic men's t-shirt. I sold this H&M blouse for $18.50 and it was a size small. You know how I love size small, right? Sure. When they sell, I do. This sold on offer at $16.96. Just want to show you that long sleeve winter items sell all year long, but this was a plus size, a Cabela's 2X. I accept an offer of $17.50 for this Jones, New York, size 14. This offer Dunner blouse sold for $20. It, this t-shirt sold for $19.99. It's a Hurley Men's XXL. I try on men's t-shirts now to only buy XL to 2XL to 3XL, as large as I can get the t-shirt. That's what I go for. Just like women's clothing, I try not to buy smalls or mediums or large. 
This Worthington blouse sold for the full price in 1999, and it's another plus size, 2X. It sold. This Notations blouse sold for 1995. You know, it's it's not a well-known brand, but it's a layered look top, plus size, 1X. I accept an offer $20 on this CJ Banks plus size top, button down, shirt, blouse, 2X. This was a different brand for me, Roker Wear. I sold it for $18, and it's a winter item that sold in June. This Forever 21 shirt, I've had it for a long time. It did sell at full asking price of $19.96, and I was happy to get it out of my inventory. I sold this Chaps button-down shirt, Women's 1X plus size, for $19. This Cato top sold for $19.99. Cato sells very well. Um, I'd say in our area, because we have a Cato store, the market is full of uh, Cato brand, and I pick it up when it's a nice size and a nice print. I had this Talbot's dress in my inventory for over a year. It sold for $19.95. It's a halter style dress, size small. I was glad to sell it. Or should I say I was glad to get rid of it. This Kim Rogers blouse sold for $19.96, and it was a size large. By the way, when I say it sold on an offer, it could be I sent an offer, it could be they sent me an offer, but this Denim & Company 2X V-neck top sold for $19.99, and I just listed it recently. It sold really fast. I picked up a lot of men's shirts last summer. This was a Tommy Bahama. It was silk. I would like to have received more, but I did sell it for $19.93, and that wasn't bad since I paid $2 for it. This Chaps blouse sold for full asking price in $19.95, size large. This Crown and Ivy sold for $19.99, full asking price, size large. I accepted in $19.96 on this Izod 1X women's blouse. I picked up several women's plus size Meggy Barn slacks at a Salvation Army several months ago. I sold this pair for $19.99, I have several more waiting to sell. I accept an offer in $19.95 on this new with Tag Riders button front blouse. I do sell shoes occasionally. I have a lot more to list as I showed you the other day, but I did sell these shoes, the Italian shoemakers from Italy, for $20. And I rarely pay more than $1 to $2 for a pair of shoes or sandals at a garage sale. I accept an offer of $20 on this new with Tag Susan Graver blouse. I had it in my inventory for quite a while. It is linen. I was glad to have the sale. I picked up these men's shorts at the Salvation Army and I paid $3 for them. I accept an offer of $20 and they are US Polo Association and size 30 and Carpenter. Carp the keywords here, Carpenter Cargo Shorts. I think that's what made them sell. They were in excellent condition at the Salvation Army. A good find. Denim blouses do sell very well for me and although this one is quite unusual with the floral embroidery, I did sell it for full asking price of $24.98. I sold this Liz Claiborne denim jacket top for $20. I got this at the Goodwill. I think I paid $3. I sold this Alex, not a brand I'm really familiar with, but I sold it for full asking price of $24.97. It's a size large, and I believe I got it at a church rummage sale for $1. Again, something I typically don't sell, at least I haven't for many years, but I pick up these new with tag bras at the Salvation Army for $3. I sold them for $25 for the two. I showed you this Peck and Peck blouse the other day and I I did sell it for full asking price of $24.97. Nice sale. I sold these Mini Tonka sandals for the full asking price of $29.99 and I think I paid $1 at a church rummage sale. This pin is one of four that went to a buyer and the total sale was $36.99 plus shipping. She bought four enamel vintage pins. I'm just showing one here. I'm not sure if this Joan Rivers jacket was in my last video. I didn't go back and rewatch it. Got this at the uh, got this at the Goodwill store for four dollars, and sold it for $39.99. Nice sale. I sold this Danskin XL top for full asking price of $19.96. In fact, the buyer bought two things from me. She also bought. This Liz Claiborne shirt at full asking price of $24.95. Let's quickly go through a few Macari sales. And as you know, Macari only charges a 10% fee and the buyer paid shipping. The buyer paid shipping on all of these that I'm going to show you. This Caribbean tropical print shirt sold for $22. This St. John Bay's 3X shirt sold for $15. CJ Banks 3X sold for $15. 
Liz Claiborne top sold for 17 size XL. Quacker Factory is a great brand. This sold for $31. This was a different brand. Wallflower had kitty cats all over it, sold for $16. Under Armour shorts sold for $16. A Walt Disney shirt sold for $13. I normally get more, but I accepted $13. This was a Favant Hawaii cover-up, bathing suit cover-up, sold for just $12. Yes, I only took $8 on this. It was a hard sell, had it for a long time, gave in, sold it. Sold this Express tank top for just $12. Accepted $9 on this men's t-shirt. Where am I? Poshmark. I have to tell you, I am not a Poshmark fan. It is such a high maintenance website. And because I'm not sharing and I'm not doing all the stuff I should do, I'm not having a lot of sales. Yes, I have tried the virtual assistant early this year in January, paid someone to share. And really it came down to me sending offers, very low offers to people who have put something in a bundle, which to most people a bundle is one item. And most of them are false bundles in my opinion. But I had a couple of sales. So this men's shirt, pretty wild looking shirt for $25, bought it at the Goodwill for $3. You have to bear with me. I can't see the brand right now and the, the place I need to find them is on the phone that I'm using to record. So just going to go through these. Sold this top for $13. This was a Kato top sold for $15. And another Kato top that sold for $10. This coat sale was nice. $65. Bought it at the Salvation Army for I think $5. And I was um, yeah pretty happy with this sale. It's, it's wool with a fur collar and yeah nice sale. I want to give a shout out to Tiffany and say thank you Tiffany and thank you to all the others that perhaps watched uh, my videos. My last video I said I need a marathon of watching all my 70 plus almost 80 videos and she did make a comment specifically saying she was watching my videos while she was working. So thank you Tiffany. Because of your help and others help I gained over 1000 minutes of view time and as you know I'm trying to reach that goal of 240,000 minutes by mid-September when I've been doing YouTube for a year. All right, I hope you give me a thumbs up for this. I hope you learned something from it. Um, you know, simple brands sell, common brands sell. I hope you got some tips and ideas from what I shared. And as always, thanks for watching. I'm Vicki with Avante Avenue. I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.